Good morning and welcome to our homestead. We are testing and reviewing another big piece of equipment that I think is very valuable for a country property and that is a wood chipper. Now I've had another little wood chipper for a long period of time, but it just is not big enough to do the job on a homestead of our size. So I found this big wood chipper. I will leave a link to it in the description below the video and I'm gonna assemble it for you this morning. Okay, let's take a look at what we got here first. This is the Big Bear Power Super Steel Series 7 inch commercial chipper and I did get this through Home Depot. It's got a lot of nice features and I will go over those as we assemble it. We've got our tires here, our wheel and tire assembly and those are rated for 45 miles an hour. Look at the size of this drum. This is a 7 inch chipper and this drum is huge. When you're unboxing this, of course, take out all the loose pieces, the tires, the chutes. This is uh, the big inlet chute right here and the front uh, stabilization tires right there, the axle. Take this out and actually twist it sideways onto the pallet so that you can work on this area here and you've got some space to work on it. There is no way you can lift this without mechanical means. It weighs about five to 600 pounds. First thing to do is install the chip door. And what you wanna do is remove this hardware from, from the top of the chip door. And this basically just sits in here. So these two pins sit in these hinges. It's pretty simple. And then we're gonna lock it together. The next thing to install is the chip chute. Now that goes up here like this. It says, to put it on with it closed. But honestly, I'd recommend opening the chip door first, opening it back up, swinging it out, and then attaching this. Because if you drop one of these bolts into the drum area, that's a problem. That's why they want you to remove them in the first place. Just swing this thing out and attach this out here. Next thing is to put on this chip head assembly. It's pretty simple. Just pop it on the top. Tighten it down. Now it's time to get on this giant inlet chute. And the special feature of this for this model is it's got a safety shutoff bar. This shuts off the machine completely. That's just in case if you happen to get caught on the log or something and it's pulling you in, all you gotta do is hit that bar. This has the same hinge style assembly as the chip outlet chute. So we're just gonna slip it on with the pins in the hinges and clamp it on. Now when you put that chute on, it is heavier, so it is gonna tip your assembly forward. Just set it down on the ground and let the rear part of it rest on that pallet. Okay, the next part is to install the axle. Now, this axle goes with this larger space toward the body of the assembly. The manual says to have two people to work on this just because of the stability of the entire assembly. If you're careful, you can just use a floor jack, jack it up on this side, make sure it doesn't tip over and that center of balance is correct and you should be fine. After you get your axle on, you need to take the lug nuts off, obviously to get the tire and wheel assembly on there. But these were on so tight from the factory, I had to use my own tools to get them off. Big Bear sends all of these tools in their packets. So you get all these free tools here, these wrenches, these different things, but none of them fit the lug nuts. A regular lug wrench will fit the lug nuts, but again, they're on there so tight, and this is free spinning, that it just won't come off. So you are going to need a pair of vice grips and an adjustable wrench and possibly a hammer to get those off of there. Now we're gonna put our wheel and tire on here. You're gonna need to jack it up pretty high to get these on. And it's just about at its center of gravity, so be very careful. We've got some bracing on the other side, we've got the chute turned sideways, and we've got the bottom latch on the chip door uh, taken off latch, so it doesn't hurt it if it does go over. Now you can brace this somehow, you can put some weight here if you want. Ours is right at the edge, and we're okay at this point, but whatever makes you feel most comfortable. The manual, of course, says that a lot of these things are a two-person job when you're assembling this thing. I understand why it is, 
but I'm just one person, so I can't get anybody else out here to help me with it. So I've got to figure out ways and mechanical methods to help me to be able to put it together by myself. Now the next trick is tough if you're by yourself. That is installing this front toe frame. So the whole assembly needs to tip backwards and it is weighted toward the front. So what I did was pull my whole weight backwards, tip it over, and I put three 80 pound bags of concrete on it to hold it. That's 240 pounds and it's very stable. Now we can get on this front toe assembly and it's gonna get much easier from this point on. And I do have to say great job by the company. This manual has so many different pictures and explanations of how to put things together. Usually you don't get pictures, you just get the writing. And this one has full color photographs. This company's out of Las Vegas. I know they have it manufactured in China, but the engineer and the designer is in Las Vegas. And that's who you contact if you ever have an issue with it. Okay, next comes the front tire assembly. Now make sure when you put on this front toe frame that you have this U channel or this U at the end facing up. I made that mistake when I first put it on, so I had to flip this thing around and it does say that in the instructions. This is gonna sit up on the top like this. We're gonna pull out our catch pins. Let those pins catch on the top holes. There we go. We're gonna take our long bolt and thread it through the entire assembly. Then when we pull our pins out, it flips down and locks into place for when we are doing our chipping. When you're towing, take those pins, lock them back up. Now we'll get in our front tow bar and we will be all set with this front end. We're gonna pull out our tow bar pins and the bolt. We're gonna put our bolt back in, put our pins back on, tighten that down. Now we're gonna lock our pins in place. Now we can get our pallet out of the way and take the weight off the back since we've got support going on in the front. In hindsight, you might want to check the air in the tires before you put them on and put the full weight of the machine down on them because they do look a little low, especially in the front, and I don't want them to get damaged. So I'm going to air those up before I do anything else. Now that we have the main machine together, there are a few other parts that you need to put on. These are the brackets for the gas tank. They go up here on the top and the gas tank is included. I'll show you how to set up the gas tank in a second, but we've also got to put on the fenders as well as attach the battery. That shouldn't take more than just a few minutes. Let's bolt all these on to the machine. The battery bolts on right underneath the feed chute right here. It's pretty simple. Just bolt the thing on. We've got our battery on, we've got our fenders on. Now it's time to attach the two gas tank brackets. And those will sit on these brackets that are attached to the engine itself. There's two on each side. And it's gonna sit just like this so the gas tank can ride above it. And since it's designed like that, they did an air cleaner that comes out of the side right here. So here's the air cleaner, pulls out this way, and the gas tank sits up here. Almost everything's installed. Now what we need to do is put this EVAP valve on the top. And this is just a press in. It's just got an O-ring on it. So we're just going to press this into this top hole. That's a tight fit. So be careful of this little barb connector on the top. You could snap that off. Okay, we're going to flip it over. Now we've got our shutoff valve and we've got this small filter tube that'll go on the bottom of it. That's going to insert in and tighten this down, this is a 7 8 inch. Now we can mount the tank on the top of the machine. And just a heads up, the unit does come with some extras. We've got, you know, oil filling filter. We've got a two inch ball, which is what the hitch takes. We've got a cover, <laughs> this interesting camo cover for the unit. 
pair of gloves. All those wrenches I showed you earlier, this is for the spark plug. Then it has a safety helmet with some ear protection if you want. I've got mine for my Husqvarna, but it's nice they include this stuff. We've also got extra fuel line and some hose clamps. Gas tank's gonna mount here on the top. I wanted to mention that you don't wanna tighten these brackets on the side all the way first because you need to get this tank in the proper position. Once the tank's on there, you can tighten the sides. Then you will use this small piece of fuel line right here to connect the fuel filter to the shutoff valve. You'll have to excuse the fan noise again. It's 8 a.m. and it's already 93 degrees outside and in this barn it's even hotter. Last piece we're gonna put on is the chainsaw slash storage box. It just goes on the back of the frame right here with these four long bolts. Pretty easy, just bolt it on. Okay friends, let's get fluids in this thing. Now the oil fill cap is on this valve cover on the side, but it is underneath the bracket, underneath the fuel shutoff valve, it's really tight. So getting your fingers in there to even unscrew it is a challenge. I don't know why these things are engineered like this. It's a little irritating, but it is what it is. So we've got the funnel that comes in there and you gotta kinda jam it with both hands down in there so it will fit. I've got 10W30 here and it needs 2.4 liters. You're just gonna have to keep an eye on the fuel or the, uh, the oil level on the dipstick, which is right down here, and just fill it up slowly till you get to the proper point. One more challenge for this is filling the gas tank. I'm five foot 10. Look at how high this thing is. It's pretty big. It's all the way up here on the top and unless you're standing on something, you're not gonna be able to see the gas gauge. You're gonna be lifting pretty far above your head to fill this up. Everything's fully assembled, the fluids are in it. Let's wheel this out and then try to start it up for the first time. All right, let's fire this thing up. On, we got spark, I tested that earlier, choked it out. This is the throttle. It's hand-operated throttle. It would have started if I kept going. It would have started on the first fire. When you're using the chipper, these front wheels need to be down, and this wheel does have a lock on it, which is nice, so it's not gonna roll anywhere. For towing, we need to flip this back and engage those two pins. One thing that I hope is not an issue is we've got my ball on my half-ton pickup is at least a foot above where our resting position for our hitch is. So I'm gonna have to lift it up on there, and I hope the rear end doesn't drag. Well, it looks like it's pretty low. It's only three or four inches off the ground back here. Obviously, I'm gonna to need to tow this with something different long-term or buy a drop hitch for it. All right, let's go chip some stuff and we'll show you how it works. Okay, my half-ton pickup did not work. It was too high and it bounced off. So I had to get my old 4x4 Explorer to tow this thing across the property. You are probably going to need a drop hitch to be able to move this thing around anywhere. All right, let's crank it up and feed this thing and see what it can handle. Well, not too bad. You saw the size that I was putting in there. It was almost the size of my hand, which is about seven inches. And 
got some pretty nice looking wood chips. It's, uh, it's pretty small. It's not the shredded look like the stuff you buy from the big box store or even the landscape service. This is more of a, a chunk. This is so important for our garden, for water mitigation, for making new soil from this, for creating a really good microbe community in this stuff and fungal community in this stuff. This is gold for our garden and our property. For us, it was a close decision between a three-point PTO-driven uh, wood chipper for the back of our tractor or a standalone unit like this. We've been having a few issues with our tractor, so I didn't want to risk it because there is a lot of work here on the homestead that needs to be done, especially chipping all of this stuff that was left by the forestry mulching process that we did a few months ago. Plus, I've got trees coming down all the time that really need to get cut up and chipped up. So that's the assembly and first review of the BBC72 Big Bear Power Chipper. If you have any questions, please leave them for me in the comments section below the video. Now go check out this video right here, which is the review of the brand new 2024 Toro Titan My Ride with a 60 inch deck. Have a beautiful blessed day. We'll see you next time.